In the last video, I demoed the streaming audio functionality. In this video, I'm going to bring it all together, uh, the receiver functionality that I showed in the earlier video, together with the streaming uh, audio capability, and then I'll have streaming uh, received RF signals uh, coming through to the ESP32, and then streamed over the Wi-Fi to, to the browser. So I've showed this uh, audio processing capability before. The, the, the couple of changes that I've done here is I've got a config-driven switch which either chooses a line out through the PMOD board or, or the stream. So I can choose that uh, at, uh, at compile time. So let's uh, demo that uh, first by injecting a, a 14.2 uh, megahertz signal. So this is simulating a, a kind of received audio signal. Uh, received RF signal, sorry. Uh, I'm injecting at minus uh, 70 dBm, which is a relatively strong signal. And then I'm receiving that signal, just panning down to the radio here. You've seen the radio before. Uh, that gets received into the radio here. Uh, here's the uh, PMOD board here. So this is where the audio gets ingested into the ESP32. The audio processing that we saw and then instead of sending the uh, video, the audio out through the line out, I stream the audio out uh, from the ESP32 out to the browser. Let's just uh, go back to the, uh, to the web interface and we, we can see that in action there. So as I tune up, so I'm on lower sideband here, as I tune up, I should hear, start to hear a tone. And note that all the tones that you're hearing here are from the uh, are from the uh, the streamed audio. A little bit of a glitch, a little bit of a hiccup there. But as you can see, there's a bit of a delay between when I click on the controls here. So I've gone down to 500 hertz above the signal, uh, and it actually coming through. And that's to do with the uh, the way the um, uh, the browser buffers audio. And I haven't yet figured out a way of uh, of controlling that. So the audio itself is uh, getting received on uh, on this um, uh, this page here. Now I'll probably merge these two together. There's no reason to have two separate uh, two separate pages here. This these are the sort of standard uh, web audio controls that I kind of demoed in the last video. Just to confirm that uh, I am in, indeed uh, we are indeed uh, hearing sort of the. Uh, uh, the direct conversion of that RF. Let me change the uh, emitted frequency here. So I'm on lower sideband. So as I uh, change the frequency of the emitted signal down, the, the tone should go up. And there's that uh, four to six seconds delay with the uh, with the audio buffering there. Just let me turn this down a little bit so I can uh, so I can actually talk here. So um, just a note on the uh, the audio buffering. As I said, I haven't figured out a way around that yet. Um, uh, one of the things that I have noticed is that the uh, uh, the higher the sampling rate, the less the the, the less is needed to buffer and the sort of sh the, the, the smaller the delay between uh, between activating the controls here and actually hearing a change in the uh, in the received signal now just a note on that I am uh, sampling at 22 kilohertz in the both for the audio processor as well as for the uh, kind of the wav that you're uh, the streaming wav that you're hearing here so both of those are at 22 kilohertz. Uh, the difference with the WAV is is it's mono, it's not stereo, um, which is uh, uh, what is processed in the ESP32. So what I'll do now is uh, we'll go out to uh, the radio room. I'll get this all set up uh, attached to an antenna. Uh, we'll get it on uh, 20 meters and uh, we'll uh, see if we can pick up some signals. Okay, so here's the uh, setup in the radio room. I've got it connected uh, to my antenna here. Um, Got power coming through here, and then uh, there's uh, this is just power for the ESP32. Um, just panning out to the, uh, I got a putty session here on the uh, on the computer here just to see what's going on. So uh, it's hooked, all hooked up. We'll uh, go out into the um, 
go out into the garage and uh, see what we can hear. Yeah, I'm not hearing anything any, anymore. Uh, Alright, uh, looking for three stations. Three stations come now. This is Kilo, two Kilo. Okay, Whiskey 3 again. I'm trying with this, uh, with this rig. Okay, so there's uh, receiving, there's a, a 13 colonies uh, contest going on at the moment. Uh, that uh, uh, particular person was from New Hampshire. Um, so uh, received signals quite good. Um, it is uh, a little bit early for 20 metres, at least, uh, you know, what I'm used to, it sort of picks up more towards uh, 4 or 5 p.m. And it's, uh, as you can see, it's, well, it's getting close to 4 p.m. now. Um, so that's basically uh, what all I intended to cover in this um, uh, in this video. Just panning over to the the diagram again. Bear with me while I adjust this. So that's pretty much everything on this diagram, kind of implemented. Uh, the only one thing that I that I thought I'd get to work, but I, I couldn't get working, was an MP3 stream rather rather than a, a WAV stream. Um, and, and I might uh, I might try and get an MP3 stream going. I mean, obviously MP3 is a lot more uh, conservative when it comes to bandwidth that it uses. Uh, but the downside of it is it's a lot uh, a lot more processing required to produce the MP3 stream. Plus, you have to find uh, an appropriate library to do so on uh, on ESP32, which you know there's some there's some freeware ones available, um, which I might uh, actually try. So. Kind of what what's next? Um, what I might do is um, uh, try and uh, complete the transmit portion of this. Um, I have done some transmitter videos in the past, but I've never sort of pulled it all together with a receiver and a transmitter together, together with uh, you know receive transmit switching. You have to do audio switching and so on and so forth. So that that's probably going to be the next step. So I'll kind of I'll continue with this radio. Uh, moving more towards the uh, transmitter side. Uh, what I might do, that kind of the first uh, sort of building block that I that I have to do for the transmitter is to um, uh, do audio switching. So you need audio switching because as you transition from receive mode to transmit mode, uh, you basically change the path of the audio signal. So this is the path of the audio signals for a receive. On transmit, the you're getting um, you're getting audio in from a microphone. You're not getting audio in from the uh, you know fr 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 in this pathway here. So you have to transition between audio in from the microphone and the transmitter uh, to audio in from the Talo mixer in a receiver. And, and there's a similar switch you have to do on the on the outside on the outbound path too. So instead of audio out to a speaker on the transmitter, your audio out actually goes into the audio pipeline for processing. Uh, but I'll cover that in the in the next uh, video. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, I've got a CD4066, uh, which I plan on using as that audio switch. Um, and uh, that's to come in the next video. Thank you, and 73, any other Kilo 5s? Okay, the 5 ending in Tango Foxtrot again. 